feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by so doing, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us begin this reflection by putting ourselves in the place of all the people in Ukraine who are suffering the effects of this war. As we know, the world is still paying the price of the human, environmental, psychological, spiritual as well as physical devastation caused by the two deadly wars, world wars of the last century. In spite of all this, Russia has gone ahead resisting all the international pressures to wage a war against Ukraine. Let's be mindful that this war has been at the cost of human lives. More than 500 people have lost their lives. More than 1,500 casualties have been reported. Nearly 30% of the population of Ukraine are in need of life-saving humanitarian assistance. Thousands of people have been displaced. Most affected are children, differently abled and senior citizens. Many people lost everything that they had and now have no place to go and no one to help them. Safety of people is at stake. Due to the heavy bombings, people are begging to please close the skies. Those who are helping are doing it at the risk of their lives. We also remember thousands of Indian students in Ukraine who are affected by this war. They have spent days fearing the uncertainty of whether they will return safe and alive to India. So in such a situation, every life matters. Every life is precious. The Bible passage that we just heard tells us that violence cannot achieve any goal. Violence is not the cure for our broken world. Neither countering violence with violence is the solution. Just imagine what this war has done to young peoples, to families, to the elderly, and to the differently abled. So the word of God is inviting us to embrace Christ's teachings about nonviolence. This teaching of Jesus is not only relevant to us, but also to political leaders and to every person. No one should think that violence is weak, that nonviolence is weak. Mother Teresa, when she received the Nobel Peace Prize, clearly stated her own message of active nonviolence where she said, we in our family don't need bombs and guns to bring peace, where she refers to the world family. Just get together, just love one another 
and we will be able to overcome all the evil that is in the world. Let us not forget that the decisive and consistent practice of non-violence has produced impressive results. The achievements of Mahatma Gandhi in the freedom struggle of India, of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in combating racial discrimination in America, of Nelson Mandela who fought the apartheid in South Africa, all used non-violence as their instrument. Let us promote among ourselves an ethics of fraternity and peaceful coexistence. Learn to respect one another and always dialogue to overcome conflict. All of us and especially world leaders, political leaders are called to be peacemakers. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we lift up our hearts to you, who prove to us that ultimately it is love and only love that will last for eternity. We lift up to you the leaders of Ukraine and Russia and all the world leaders. Touch the hearts that are hardened with greed for power and money, so that their leadership may be of peace and harmony. Lord, we lift up to you all the people who are suffering due to injuries, due to death of their loved ones, due to destruction of their safe spaces and social security. We lift up the children, the youth, the elderly, the differently abled and others. Comfort them through our prayers and through the generosity of the world community. Keep safe all those who are rendering humanitarian service in the war affected areas, risking their lives. We remember in a very special way all those who lost their lives in this war. Grant eternal rest to their souls and comfort to the bereaved family members. We pray earnestly for the end of this war. Lord, help all of us to cultivate non-violence in our most personal thoughts and values. Give us your grace to resist the temptation of retaliation. May nonviolence become the hallmark of our decision, of our relationships, of our actions, and also of political life in all its form. May we dedicate ourselves prayerfully and actively to banish violence from our hearts through our words and deeds. Nothing is impossible when we turn to God in prayer. You who live and reign forever and ever,